So more from up here at uh, Knowles Hospital. We've been talking about the Great North Air Ambulance Service. And uh, with me now is Gareth, who, um, Gareth, a Manx boy, come back to the Isle of Man. Yep. Um, I'll come to the other bits in a second, but you, helicopters is very much part of your background. So yeah. this must be quite exciting to have this sorted now, isn't it? Oh, extremely. I, I can't tell you how excited we are about this project. Uh, you know, I've had a very privileged and lucky career to, mm. to work with the Air Ambulance in London, and I've been able to see what a service like this can bring to patients and change outcomes and to, to be able to bring that opportunity to the people of the Isle of Man is, is just uh, fantastic, something I dreamt of <laughs> for a long time. This is a bit I need to get back on your, your career because um, to say that you've been involved in some of the largest events in London, uh, te- I'm talking about terrorist attacks, you were yeah. there, we, we all heard about you being involved very quickly yeah. and your face says everything there. I mean, it must have been just strange, bizarre, I know, whatever we're going to use to well, just have that going on <laughs> right there in front of you in London. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think if you grow up in Onken and go to Onken Primary School, you don't imagine yourself in the middle of terrorist events in London, but that's how it panned out. So Can you just remind us what you did there, though? Yeah. So at, um, at the 7-7 bombings, uh, it was a unique day for us. We managed to put uh, multiple teams into each uh, bombing site. Uh, I personally went to the one at uh, Olgate, uh, treated the patients there. Um, it was a, an incredibly stressful day for all the emergency services yeah. and ourselves, um, but unfortunately part of modern emergency medicine. Yeah, I mean, because you landed the chopper in some really crazy places, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, the, the service in London still remains very special. It lands in some very unique places. Yeah. Tr- challenging. Bridge. Yeah, challenging events for the, uh, for the captain, without a doubt, but London Bridge... Uh, Trafalgar Square, yeah, yeah, they're all part of the regular sort of uh, landing portfolio for the team in London. Well, well done, congratulations on what you did there for so many people. Thank you. Back to this, though. Um, yeah. It's a trial, but it's an ongoing yeah. trial, right? Or a long-term trial, what's yeah. the right word? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it is a trial, and uh, it is a, a, about feasibility, making it, making it work. You know, I've been lucky to see how these things can work in the UK. There's a network of helicopters, over 30 throughout the whole of the UK, and to be able to bring the, the services that they can provide to the island is, um, is very special. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it isn't just about patients that are badly injured, it's also about patients that have heart attacks. Mm-hmm. It's about delivering care at the scene, uh, which is like the emergency department behind us, so mm-hmm. that the team that operate in this aircraft pretty much do everything that we do in the emergency department. So it literally brings the emergency department to the patient's side. But the added benefit is that we can take patients to exactly the right specialty across, mm. uh, whether that's around heart attacks or whether it's around brain surgery. This was one of the major recommendations, wasn't it, in the report into healthcare in the Isle of Man. So this has yeah. plugged a gap. Obviously, uh, you yeah. want to become from a trial to a permanent thing. I'm so sure that's down the road, but you yeah, have ho- no, high hopes of it. I have really high hopes for it because at the moment, this is contemporary care. If you live in central London or if you live in the Lake District, you will get an advanced critical care team at your side when you're in the dying process and you'll be taken to exactly the right hospital. Mm. Right here, right now on the island, that doesn't exist. And this is what we're working towards. Because of our size, I'm guessing, we can't have every Um, sort of availability of everything. We can't can't have brain surgery here. We can't have cardiothoracic surgery here. It's simply not feasible. But what this does allow us to do is give you the right treatments early on and then get you to those specialist surgeons. So it plugs a really big gap, an important gap. And they were saying they can be here about half an hour if it's from Penrith or whatever. And so turn around and back again and then you you get the right hospital for the right conditions. Yeah, exactly. At the moment, it's still very protracted. If If you're seriously injured... We can uh, we can treat you if you crash on the mountain. We can treat you, bring you to hospital, but we then have to stabilise you. We have to get you down to the airport. We've got to get you across to the other airport. Yeah. Then we've got to get you in an ambulance. And and the time is too close. All, to all these patients that we deal with in aircraft like this are dying. Yeah. So it, every minute genuinely counts in this particular group of patients.